Good morning everyone. Today it's about 6.30 in the morning and I'm out here dealing with a 559 code on this coming 6.7 liter engine at an international. So what I verified here is I'm losing pressure under load in the fuel rail. It's commanding 20,000. I'm only getting eight. So it's only under load too it seems because even I'm idle right now I can run this fuel leak test which pressurizes your fuel rail up to 20,000 25,000 a good amount of pressure so you could check for any leaks on your high pressure system but I'm not getting any and it's operating pretty smoothly. What I've done here is I've plumbed in this fuel gauge to the fuel line feeding the high pressure pump, the low pressure fuel line. And this is our fuel pressure going to the pump because I want to see if it's we're losing fuel pressure on the low side or if it's just the high side that's acting up. And I notice it is kind of acting weird with this needle constantly dipping. And I'm wondering if that has something to do with it. And what would cause that? Because it's pretty regular, it seems. I got that plumbed in out, going outside out to the pump there. So I'm going to stop this test. And I'm gonna just rev this thing up at a higher RPM, see what we got on this gauge. Looks like the high pressure pump is physically starving of fuel. The demand isn't so high because it's just high idle, no load. But when I go on a road test, um, I'm gonna see if it falls on its flat, flat on its face, and see if um, how low this gauge gets, or if this is affecting it, which it probably is because that doesn't look good. It should be constant, I would think. Um, so that's kind of where we're at here. 559 codes are just terrible to diagnose if you don't really know what you're doing. Even still, they're really annoying because it could be anything in the fuel system. It could be a failing solenoid pump itself and then check your leaking. There's just so much stuff it could be. So this one came in before the new year. Of course, the customer asking if the thing could be done or not. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just a big code. Don't know what to expect, so yeah, that's where we're at right now. I'm just gonna go on a little boot and see if how, how far our fuel delivery pressure goes down, and um, that's kind of my isolation of if it's a high pressure fuel system or a low pressure. It's looking like low pressure, so here we go. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and say that something wrong with a low pressure fuel system. Is now this idle with the engine hot and it's all over the place. So I'm gonna, I'm on a empty stretch of road here, the side road. So I'm gonna load it up. It's an intermittent problem when it would happen with the customer. But you can see, yeah, look at fuel. Pressure's getting right down there. And already I can see the fuel rail pressure. Commanding 26,000 and we're only getting like 17. So gas 
definitely an issue with the high pressure system. Or sorry, low pressure system. Which is better than having a problem with the high pressure system because the high pressure system is a whole another set of tests that are time consuming to do. So yeah, I'm gonna go after this, see what that could be. Debris or junk or something in the tank. I know it's not aeration, I tested for aeration already. That's one of the first tests you should do with a fuel problem. The 559 code especially. So must be a blockage or something in the system. Now I did run a restriction test on it, but just seeing how intermittent this problem was and it is um, everything passed, so I'm sure something's moving around in there now. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Testing that out. pressure pump. We got no aeration, no bubbles. Still bouncing around. Probably a restriction issue or a fault with the low pressure fuel pump. I'm going to test for restriction going into the pump. Okay, so I'm hooking my line up for my vacuum gauge up to the fuel filter uh, boss here. This is coming from the tank is this one, going to this filter, and then going out to the uh, low pressure pump is this one here, that line. So this is gonna be under suction. So really, this filter was replaced. So there shouldn't be any restriction in here. So I'll see what I get for spec. I believe spec is anything less than 12 inches of water is in spec. So I'll see what I'm getting from the tank. And I ran this line, I looped it around to my vacuum gauge here, which I'm gonna feed through the window and still leave this hooked up for my pressure so I can watch when I'm losing pressure, what my vacuum gauge is doing. Okay, so I think I know what our problem is here. We're sitting at 25 inches of water. As you can see, our gauge is going crazy. So we definitely got high restriction of fuel coming into this thing. So where I'm pulling the vacuum at is right after the main filter, fuel filter. Customer said they replaced that filter. Um, so it's probably not the filter, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run an auxiliary fuel tank which what that's gonna do is bypass the whole fuel system from that filter to the tanks and then see if we got this much vacuum. If we do still, well then the issue's in either in the filter head or the filter itself, I'll throw another filter on there. Um, but if it corrects itself, then the problem is either a kinked line or debris in the fuel tank plugging up the line. So, good. Glad well, we found out what the problem is, at least. Just gotta find out where and the joys of 559 fuel codes okay got my auxiliary fuel tank hooked up here put fuel in there running it into our filter so we're bypassing the whole fuel system on this unit and I'm still getting pretty much 15 inches of water which is at a spec still. And we're getting a little movement on the needle. So I'm gonna say something's plugged or plugging in that filter head. That guy there. Either the filter or it could be something to do with the uh, primer pump or something. So I'm gonna pull it all out apart, I think. Go from there. Because yeah, it shouldn't um, shouldn't be this high of restriction. With the gauge still going weird. Well, I pulled this all apart, couldn't find nothing. 
So I decided to pull this heater element apart. And look what we have here. All this debris. Yes sir, yes sir, this is our problem right here. Funny thing is, I could not see it through there. Could not see it through any of the ports. I even pulled the strainer out for the uh, primer pump. Couldn't see it through there. So yeah, pulling that off. That is our problem. Nice. All right, got a new heater element installed. I cleaned out the filter boss and got a new filter in there. Not a fan of Baldwin filters, but what we had, so installed it. Um, what I also ended up doing was flushing out the fuel lines, going all the way back to the tank. So now this fuel, this line has no fuel in it. So I'm just gonna grab a vacuum tool. I think right there, just suck the fuel up out of the tank. That way there it's uh, primed and ready to go. And thankfully there was no debris in the fuel tank. So it must have just been whatever was in there that it sucked up over the years. So I'm gonna get this primed up, install it. I hooked up all my test equipment again and just gonna verify and make sure that the vacuum as well as that pressure is in spec. Okay, moment of truth here. Got to work the air out of the system. Oh yeah, look at that. Way better than 25. Fuel pressure stabilized. The big thing, the suction now is within spec. We're sitting at like four inches of water good that's it well i'm going to go on a road test with these gauges just to verify make sure that our pressure doesn't fluctuate anymore and also just make sure of that but yeah that's uh that's it all right take care guys